the Dodge Durango now drops them off on the back straightaway. Tim Munson, Steve King up front, Terry Pletch and Tony Lutar row two, Jim Cameron, Brian Carlson make up row number three. And as the tightly bunched field now makes its way through turn number three and four, they hit the white chalk line and we are racing. King and Munson go side by side in turn one. Now Steve King shoots out to a big lead coming out of turn two. King with the lead down the back straightaway. Tim Munson still in second. Tony Lutar now up to third as Pletch falls back to fourth. At the line is King, Munson, Lutar, Pletch, Cameron, Carlson, Bennett. And look at Darren Stewart moving up from the back of the pack. Darren Stewart on the move of that 9S car now up to the seventh position. Seventh position for the 9S of Darren Stewart now looks to the inside of Bob Bennett. As Steve King continues to lead him down the back straightaway. Tim Munson continues to hold that second and final transfer position. One spot out, the 4X of Tony Lutar. Tony Lutar one spot out. As Lutar now gets a little crossed up coming out of turn four, opens the door for Terry Pletch. As Terry Pletch, the 29P car, took a look to the inside of Tony Lutar in turn one. Lutar now stretches out the advantage for third down the back straightaway. So Steve King now building up a fairly sizable advantage over the 1WM car of Tim Munson. As Tony Lutar tries to close the gap in turns three and four on the 1WM of Munson. And that time by, halfway home, five laps down, five to go for your leader, Steve King, who's now on the back straightaway, approaching lap traffic. As your leader now approaches the lap car of Shane Hunter. Shane Hunter, the 8S, a little ahead of Hunter, the 15M of Bobby Meinzer. Darren Stewart continues to work to the inside of Bob Bennett. And you see Steve King having a little trouble getting around the 8S and Shane Hunter. As the groove is still fairly narrow out on the speedway and Steve King having a little trouble negotiating the lap traffic. As you see a heavy traffic ahead is Derek Beckman. Oh, trouble, turn four. As, oh, Kurt Trainer hard into the front stretch wall. Red on the speedway, red flag on the speedway. And field now nice and slow. Steve King brings him off turn four and accelerates down the front straightaway. King leads him into turn one. Tony Lutar tries to get around on Tim Munson for second. Meanwhile, Bill McCroskey a little out of shape in turn one, gets up over the cushion, now straightens it back out behind the 53 of Charlie Osborne. Darren Stewart goes by Bob Bennett for the sixth position. Or excuse me, for seventh. That's the battle for seventh. Now Stewart looks to the inside of Brian Carlson. Carlson and Stewart battling. And look at the race now for the second position. Tony Lutar up alongside Tim Munson. Munson shuts the door, turn three. White flag is up for your leader. White flag is out for Steve King. As Munson continues to run second, Tony Lutar third now. That's the battle for second in the final transfer spot. Down the back straightaway, Tony Lutar has two more turns to go. Steve King comes down the front straightaway, picks up the win the E-Main. Tim Munson will come home second, followed by Tony Lutar, Terry Fletch, and Jim Cameron. Again, 33, Matt Morrow, and 52, Ronald Laney in the front row. 20, E, Brian Ellenberger. V10, John Vandenberg. 11, K, Craig Kinzer. 92, Travis Cram. 17, Larry Ball, Jr. 72, Dwayne Benini, Jr. U12, John Egan. 7, O, L, Linton Jeffrey. Todd Gracie, Christy Passmore, Ralph Spitholler, Tommy Tarleton, the rest of the field ready for the D-Main. We try to start once again on a turn number four. Trouble at the front of the pack. Big trouble. Cars upside down on the front straightaway. Ronald Laney. Ronald Laney upside down. For the fourth time this evening, Doug Clark waves the green flag over the field for the D-Main event. Down into turns one and two, John Vandenberg takes the early lead with Matt Morrow holding the second and final transfer spot. Travis Cram, Craig Kinzer.
And Linton Jeffrey rounding out the top five. One lap in the books, one lap down with John Vandenberg, the Flying Dutchman, out in front of the field. Dwayne Benini Jr. off the pace, heads toward the infield there on the backstretch. Spins the car sideways, and the caution flag will fly. Caution flag flying over the field with three laps complete. Matt Mora with a big slider into turns one and two to take command, and Tim Kading trying to grab the fifth spot from Jeffrey. Couldn't make that move stick out of turn number two. Again, Kading looks to the bottom of the speedway. This time slides up in front of the Vortex Racing Product 7-0-L to take fifth. Craig Kinzer now working on Travis Cram, the battle for third in the turns three and four. Cram way up over the cushion, slides sideways, allowing Kinzer to grab the third spot. The youngster out of Bloomington, Indiana, needs to make a charge to try to get one more position to transfer to tonight's O'Reilly Auto Parts C-Main event. Kading now looks to the bottom in turns three and four, trying to take a spot from Travis Cram. Couldn't make that move work. Again, Tim Kading working the low side of the speedway, trying to grab the fourth spot from the driver out of Snohomish, Washington. Just past the halfway point, seven laps down, five laps to go in the D-Main. Matt Morrow, John Vandenberg, your top two cars in transfer spots. Craig Kinzer right there in third, gaining on the Flying Dutchman down the back straightaway. Craig Kinzer looking to take the transfer spot, goes low out of turn number four, can't make the move there, right on the back bumper of the V10 car into turns one and two. Leaders approaching lap traffic now. Matt Morrow with a 1.2 second lead at the start finish line last time by. Lap traffic now. Tommy Tarleton going a lap down to second place. John Vandenberg. Tarleton able to give Vandenberg a bit of breathing room over Craig Kinzer, but Kinzer goes right up to the cushion in three and four. White flag flying, final trip around the speedway. Can Craig Kinzer get the job done? Got a little crossed up entering the corner. Mora with a big lead down the backstretch. Car slowing in turns three and four. Checkered flag and caution flag waving simultaneously. Your D main winner, Matt Morrow. Manny Rockhold and Leonard Lee, the top two from last night's non qualifiers A main, make up the sixth row. Jason Johnson and Peter Murphy, row seven. Larry Pinderner led Thompson in row eight. Brent Entil, Kevin Fry, that's row nine. Row number 10 finds on the inside the 47, Randy Anderson alongside the one Aston Mark Taze. Into the back, Matt Morrow, John Vandenberg, cutting up from tonight's D main. And as the field now files through turns three and four. And as they approach the chalk line, green flag drops. Kenny Jacobs has the lead down the front straightaway. Jacobs out in front, Danny Smith gets a little out of shape, allows Brooke Tandle, Travis Rylatt to go by for third and fourth. Up front, Brian Pauls tries to put the high side move on Kenny Jacobs. Now tucks back underneath Kenny Jacobs, those two running one and two down the front straightaway. Tandle up to third, Travis Rylatt back to fourth. A good battle for the lead up front with Kenny Jacobs, Kenny, or Kenny Jacobs and Brian Paulus. Johnny Herrera now looks to the inside of Danny Smith for the fifth position. That's the battle for fifth. Herrera now goes to the high side. Danny Smith continues to run through the middle of the speedway. On the back straightaway, Rob Cheney now moves past the 10B of Jamie Moyle. As Herrera continues to work the high side on Danny Smith for the fifth position. Oh, Kim Bach way up high, out of shape, up over the cushion. 
regains control. Rob Cheney slipped past. As Rob Cheney now goes to the seventh position. Kenny Jacobs leads. Brian Paul is second. Brooke Tatnell third. Travis Riley at fourth. Johnny Herrera now to the fifth spot. Danny Smith back to sixth. Max Dumpty seventh. Rob Cheney and eighth. Kim Mock and Jamie Moyle round out the top ten. And turn two, look at Matt Morrow smoking heavily off the pace. As Matt Morrow brings the 33 car up against the fence, bringing out the caution flag. So yellow on the speedway for the 33 of Matt Morrow. And Doug Clark looks him over, turn four. Keep your eye on the cone on the front straightaway. Kenny Jacobs brings him into turn one. Brian Paulus goes right to the high side of the speedway. As does Johnny Herrera. Johnny Herrera tries to get a run on Brooke Tatnell down the back stretch. Not going to happen. Tatnell continues to hold third. Herrera is still back and forth. Now trying the inside of the speedway. Johnny Herrera goes by Brooke Tatnell for third. Herrera now sits one spot out of the transfer. Look at Rob Cheney now up to the top five as well. Almost. Is he working on Danny Smith down the back straightaway? That is the battle for fifth. Cheney now powers past down the back stretch. Side by side racing for the fifth position. Smith on the inside, Cheney up on the outside. Cheney takes over fifth. Well, Johnny Herrera now reels in Brian Pauls for that second and final transfer position. Kenny Jacobs leads, Brian Paul second. Johnny Herrera third, a little further back. Now look at Rob Cheney, works to the inside of Brooke Tatnell. Tatnell squeezed him down to the inside, now slides up. Tatnell has fourth. Cheney still runs in the fifth position. Danny Smith sixth, Kim Mock seventh. Max Dumsney eighth, Jason Johnson ninth. Then Peter Murphy rounds out the top 10. Battle for that second and final transfer spot. Heating up in turn four. Look at Johnny Herrera. Moves past Brian Paulus, takes over second. Herrera to second, Paulus back to third. Brooke Tano runs fourth with Rob Cheney rounding out your top five. Your leader continues to be Kenny Jacobs. Johnny Herrera now holds second. Brian Paul is third. Brooke Tano fourth. Rob Cheney fifth. Danny Smith sixth. And Kim Mock rounds out the top seven cars. As we see Len Thompson and Jamie Moyle now moving past the zero car of Peter Murphy. That's the race for 11th between Moyle and Murphy. Len Thompson now to 10th in that 10T car. A pair of six cars up front, 6K of Kenny Jacobs leads the plane six to Johnny Herrera. Currently one spot out of a transfer to 28 of Brian Pauls. Remember, Pauls just came back just this weekend from injury suffered at the Bristol Speedway. So Brian Paul is making his return to racing this weekend at the Emma Goldman Knoxville Nationals. The white flag is out. White flag is out. Look at that. Now a race heating up for the lead. As your leaders are on lap traffic. Kenny Jacobs, Johnny Herrera approaching lap traffic. Brian Paul says one last chance. Tries the high side of the speedway on Johnny Herrera. Not going to be enough. Kenny Jacobs picks up the win. Johnny Herrera second. Brian Paul comes home third. Fourth will go to the 66 of Brooke Tatnell. Fifth will go to Rob Cheney. 3G Mike Goodman, 3 Darren Pittman in the front row, 8H Shane Stewart, 51 Casey Kane in row 2, 12 Craig Hodden at 21W Danny Wood in row 3, 88H Lance Louise, 7S Jason Sides in row 4, 82 Kerry Matson, 55 Skip Jackson in row 5, Gary Wright, Byron Reed, Jeff Matrician, Ricky Logan, Don Trout Jr., Dale Blaney, Calvin Landis, Ed Lynch Jr., Jack Hoddenshield, Dean Jacobs, Kenny Jacobs, and Johnny Herrera ready to go racing. Green flag waves, B-Main is underway. Mike Goodman, the early leader. Darren Pittman running second. Trouble out of turn number four. Excuse me, out of turn number two. Dale Blaney upside down, Ed Lynch Jr. with him. Channel lock, B-Main again looking for the green flag out of turn number four. Green flag flying, battle for the lead out of turn number two. Pittman on the high side, gets together with Goodman. Goodman collects Casey Kane. And another pile up at the back of the pack. Kane gets upside down.
In the turn number four, green flag flying, we are underway. Through the first corner, it's Shane Stewart out in front of the Holbrook Motorsports entry. Greg Hodnett on the charge running second, Darren Pittman is third, and Danny Wood in the fourth and final transfer spot. Jason Sides challenging on the bottom side of the speedway. A lot of smoke out of Danny Wood's Pepsi 21W as he closes in on Darren Pittman's Winnebago car number three. Race for third on the bottom side in turns three and four. Danny Wood makes the move out of turn number four to take the third spot away. Jack Hodden shield up into the top 10 in the Wise Motorsports car number 97. Close call with the 55 of Skip Jackson down the backstretch. Four laps in the books. Shane Stewart out in front. The advantage 1.24 seconds over Greg Hutton Danny Wood third. Darren Pittman holding on to that fourth and final transfer spot. Jason Sides running in fifth as Don Trout Jr. is off the pace into turn number one. Caution flag flies on the speedway. Flag waving once again as they race single file past the cone on the front straightaway. Jason Sides down on the bottom of the speedway trying to take the transfer spot from Darren Pittman. Side by side, wheel to wheel down the back stretch for the last transfer spot. Pittman up on the cushion. Jason Sides working the bottom side of the speedway as Greg Hodnett challenges Shane Stewart for the lead. Jason Sides slides into the transfer spot now. Looking to pick up that award as Rookie of the Year at the Amico Ultimate Knoxville Nationals. Now sets his sights on Danny Woods' Pepsi 21W. Greg Hodnett works down low out of turn number two, trying to wrestle the lead away from Shane Stewart's Holbrook Motorsports 8H. Darren Pittman coming right back after Jason Sides for the transfer spot. Great racing for the lead and for the transfer spot as they roll down the back straightaway. Pittman back up into the transfer spot and going to bring Kerry Madsen with him in the Showtime Trailers 82. Race for the lead down the front stretch. Greg Hodnett now out in front of the Apple Chevrolet number 12. Side by side, duel for the lead into turn number three, nearly some contact there, still wheel to wheel out of turn number four. Kerry Madsen takes the transfer spot away from Darren Pittman as Hodnett holds on to the lead on the high side out of turn number two. It's Hodnett, Stewart, Danny Wood and Kerry Matson, your top four. Darren Pittman fifth, Jason Side sixth, Jack Hodden showed up to seventh, Lance Luis eighth, Byron Reed ninth, and Dean Jacobs in tenth. Kerry Matson working the low side of the speedway, now going to try to take the third spot from Danny Wood's Pepsi machine. Slides up, nearly some contact. In fact, there was some contact there. Big wheel stand by Jason Sides in turn number two. A lot of smoke from Danny Woods, Pepsi machine, problems for the driver out of Norman, Oklahoma. Caution flag flying, a tough break for Danny Wood in the Pepsi 21W. Green flag waves were back underway. Shane Stewart tries the top side of the speedway, trying to get a run on Greg Hodnett down the backstretch. Jason Sides looking to grab fifth spot from the Wild Child as Darren Pittman looks at the high side of the speedway to take third from Kerry Matson. Darren Pittman working the top side of the speedway. Kerry Matson down low, still racing nose to tail down the backstretch. Matson has third. Pittman in the fourth and final transfer spot. Still 15 car lengths in front of Jack Hardenshield as Lance DeWeese tries to take the sixth spot from Jason Sides. Makes that pass happen out of turn number four. Hodnett, Stewart, Madsen, and Pittman, your top four. Hodden, Shield, fifth. Lance Luis, sixth. Jason, side, seventh.
Race leader Greg Hodden at turning laps in the 16.2 second bracket, 110 miles per hour for an average speed. Jack Hodden, she'll now try to reel in Darren Pittman's Winnebago number three. Can't make up a whole lot of ground down the back straightaway and into three and four. Now Hodden, she'll down those. Pittman works the cushion. Cushion. Hodden, she'll slides up. Right now on the back bumper, battle for the transfer spot into one and two. Both drivers take the high line. Lance DeWeese working well off the low side of turn number two, gonna try to grab fifth from Hoddenshield. Three car battle for the last transfer spot between Darren Pipp and Jack Hoddenshield and Lance DeWeese. Four more circuits to go, just four more laps remaining. Greg Hodnett out in front by 1.12 seconds over the 8H of Shane Stewart. Jack Hoddenshield running out of time, looking for a start in the Amico Ultimate Knoxville Nationals. He works the middle of the speedway now on a turn number four, just three car lengths behind Darren Pittman. Pittman gets the better run through turns one and two as your race leader looks at the white flag. Greg Hodnett is a half a mile from a channel lock B main victory. Hodnett races down the back stretch as the race for the transfer spot heats up again. And now Lance Louise trying to grab fit from Jack Hoddenshield makes that pass out of turn number two. Checkered flag flying. Greg Hodnett is the channel lock B main winner. Shane Stewart finishes second. Kerry Madsen is third. And grabbing the last transfer spot, it's Darren Pittman. fans one more time give it up for them this is the best in business right here also give it up to the Knoxville safety crew part of the honor guard this evening just like it with all those guys we're gonna go ahead and send upstairs Tony Bachoven Knoxville, Iowa, you one of the best. You've got them for a breast. The greatest show on dirt. The 41st running of the Amico Ultimate Knoxville Nationals. Caution lights go out. We go racing out of turn four the next time by 30 laps the distance. Donnie Schatz and Danny Lasoski in the front row. Mark Kinzer and Terry McCarl in row two. Joey Saldana, Paul McMahon, Stevie Smith, 
Steve Kinzer, Jason Myers, Craig Delansky, Sammy Swindell, Jeff Shepard, Brad Furr, Tim Schaefer, Randy Hannigan, Sean Michael, Dennis Moore Jr., PJ Chesson, James Chesson, Chad Kemenaw, Greg Hodnett, Shane Stewart, Kerry Matson, and Darren Pittman ready to do battle. And Donnie Shots turn one. Oh no, Donnie Shots. And oh boy, big trouble turns one and two. Five M Mark Kinzer, 20 L Danny Lasoski, 83 Joey Saldana, 24 Terry McCarl, 19 Stevie Smith, YouTube Paul McMahon. Jason Myers, Jeff Shepard, Sammy Swindell, and Shawn Michael. Green flag flying, we are underway. Into turns one and two, Mark Kinzer down on the low side. Danny Lasowski, Delansky into the wall and upside down. Watch the chalk line in turn four. Mark Kinzer, Danny Lasowski lead him down the front straight away. Green flag racing once again. Lasoski on the bottom side of the speedway takes the lead. Here comes Mark Kinzer with momentum up on the cushion. Joey Saldana third. Terry McCarl fourth. Stevie Smith rounding out the top five as they race through three and four. Everyone nice and clean down the back straightaway into turns three and four. Field shuffles out. Danny Lasoski, Mark Kinzer, Joey Saldana. That's how it is the first lap. Lasoski with a lead going down the back straightaway. Battle for the fourth spot. Now Stevie Smith on the high side of the speedway, reeling in the Sander Engineering 24 of Terry McCarl. McCarl down low, Smith up on the cushion. Danny Lasoski now starting to stretch out a little bit of a lead on the 5M of Mark Kinzer. Lasoski up on the cushion. Mark Kinzer continues to run down low through turns one and two. Stevie Smith able to get by Terry McCarl. Smith moves up to fourth. McCarl runs fifth. Then it's Paul McMahon in sixth. Jason Johnson, or excuse me, Jason Myers seventh. Here comes Tim Schaefer on the high side of the speedway. Remember, Schaefer was second fastest during the warm up session earlier this evening. He makes the pass of Jason Myers into turn number two. Tim Schaefer has moved up into the seventh spot. Terry McCarl has gone back by Stevie Smith for the fourth spot. McCarl the fourth, Stevie Smith back to fifth. Schaefer, the fastest car on the speedway right now, the 5 and 11 H up on the cushion in turns one and two, makes the pass of Paul McMahon to take over sixth. Up front continues to be Danny Lasoski, about a half a straightaway lead on Mark Kinzer. A little further back, the 83 of Joey Saldana, the 24 Terry McCall, and Stevie Smith rounds out your top five. Lasoski working the bottom side in turns three and four, has been running the high line in one and two. Completing lap number six with a 1.5 second lead over Mark Kinzer. Joey Saldana continues to run third. Terry McCarl fourth and Stevie Smith fifth. Paul McMahon has gotten back by Tim Schaefer for sixth. Your leader is now getting very close to lap traffic. As Daniel Lasoski now edging up on the 22 of James Chesson. Lap traffic about to come into play. Should be interesting to find out who has the better car in traffic, who handles better. Mark Kins are trying something a little different. The low line in one and two, it worked well for him. Closing in on the JD Byrider, car number 20L. And as they now get very close to lap traffic, Dennis Moore Jr. is up on the cushion. Danny Lasowski that time low through turns three and four. Lasowski now takes it to the bottom in one and two. Mark Kinzer follows right along the bottom. Kinzer slid up into the slick part of the speedway, lost a little ground entering turn number two. Sammy Swindell makes the move around Jason Myers, the channel lock number one up to eighth. Danny Lasowski now puts a lap on the 71 car. Dennis Moore Jr. now goes back to the cushion in one and two. Mark Kinzer follows him around the high side. Joey Saldana third. Terry McCall having a strong performance in fourth. Stevie Smith fifth. Paul McMahon sixth. Tim Schaefer seventh. Sammy Swindell eighth. PJ Chesson ninth. And Jason Myers rounds out your top ten. Into some heavier traffic now. Lasowski's lead nine tenths of a second over the Mopar 5M of Mark Kinzer. As Lasowski works lap traffic, the 5M of Kinzer now closes. Look at Mark has a strong run coming out of turn four. The gap narrows once again. Into one and two. Lasowski trapped by a slower car on the bottom side of the speedway. Can't make his way by the 22 of James Chesson. 
Mark Kinzer now reeling in the dude down the backstretch. Lasowski up to the high side. Mark Kinzer tries the middle and turns three and four. Lasowski with cars on the inside and the outside right in front of him now. Tries to duck under the truck. Left car, James Chesson. Lasowski puts Chesson a lap down. Mark Kinzer now a little further back. Lasowski now shoots the inside there and put Pittman, Pittman put Pittman a lap down. Danny Lasowski working extremely well in traffic. That may have uh, been one of the moves we'll talk about at the end of the race that sealed the deal, being, uh, being able to split Chesson and Pittman like that. Mark Kins are still unable to cope with those two lap cars. As Sammy Swindell tries the high line around PJ Chesson into turns one and two. That is the battle for the eighth squad. And as Lasowski hits the flag stand halfway home, 15 laps down, 15 to go for your leader, Danny Lasowski. Tim Schaefer again moving forward in the Vibrant 11H, right on the back bumper of Stevie Smith's Ingersoll Rand number 19, racing for fifth. But look at Mark Kinzer now splits between the lap cars of James Chess and Darren Pittman as Mark Kinzer continues his pursuit of Daniel Lasowski around the high side of the speedway. Great three-car battle for fifth, sixth, and seventh between Stevie Smith, Tim Schaefer, and Paul McMahon. McMahon ducks to the inside of the Vibrant 11H. They race wheel to wheel into turns three and four. As Danny Lasowski got a little out of shape trying to put a lap on the 8H of Shane Stewart. No lap cars now separating Danny Lasowski in second place. Mark Kinzer as they work through turns three and four. McMahon and Schaefer continue their duel side by side down the back straightaway. The race is for six. Schaefer up on the cushion. McMahon down on the low side of the speedway. McMahon able to hang on to the spot as they race into turns one and two. Lasowski still down low, Kinzer trying the middle of the speedway out of turn number four, still about 10 car lengths separating the top two. Lasowski now goes below Greg Hotnet, puts a lap on the 12H car, as they're now one lap car separating the top two. Oh, a spin right in front of your leader. Oh, Danny Lasowski nips past. No yellow, the track stays green as Jeff Shepard does a 360. Kerry Matson now stopping here on the front straightaway to bring out the caution. A very, very, very close call for your leader, Danny Lasowski, in turns three and four. That's the work in America five car, Jeff Shepard spun. And as the field now accelerates, coming out of turn four, keep your eye on the cone on the front straightaway. Lasowski leads him down into turn one. As Mark Kinzer has a lot of work to do in the next five laps as he's going to catch Danny Lasowski. Kinzer slides up, now puts a lap on Darren Pittman. Stevie Smith around Terry McCarl to take over the fourth spot. Now going to try to grab third from Joey Saldana, but McCarl a strong run off the bottom of the speedway. Side by side, wheel to wheel in the one and two. Stevie Smith now goes to the high side, takes fourth from Terry McCarl, sets his sights on third place Joey Saldana. Jason Myers running the top side of the speedway, passing Paul McMahon into turn number four. Hot foot Jason Myers now up into the sixth spot. McMahon gets a run off of turn number two, moves back by the Eagle Raceway's car number 20. Lasowski clearly in command of this one. As the battle now for fourth goes into turn one, Terry McCarl on the inside, Stevie Smith runs through the middle, and Smith overtakes the fourth position. McCarl back to fifth, Paul McMahon still sixth. White flag flying half a mile to go. Danny Lasowski negotiates turns one and two on the very bottom of the speedway. Battles continuing back in the pack, but down the back stretch they go. Lasowski down low in three and four. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the 41st running of the Amico Ultimate Knoxville Nationals, the dude, Danny Lasowski. victory lap on the back straightaway. Backstretch fans, let him hear you.
congratulations, please. Andrea Thompson and Bill. Race fans, he's climbing out of his car, give it up for the dude from Dover, Daniel Sasuke! <laughs> Woo! Unbelievable, we got this one. TNN going to do their interviews right now with Daniel Sasuke. A race fans, he makes his way to the top for the second time at the Amico Ultimate Knoxville Nationals. He's on stage via telephone right now, cell phone Tony Stewart on the phone. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the dude, Daniel Sasuke! <laughs> Tony stayed on the line. Dude, congratulations, one heck of a roll. Let's go on this side for a kid, please. You want me to interview him? Okay, I'm interviewing Tony Stewart. Tony, you guys did it. So, Tony Stewart says, unbelievable, what a driver we got. That, uh, basically, you want to know where you're at, but we know you had practice today. Everything going good with you guys? All right, sounds good. He's unbelievable again. Everything went good for him. Again, Tony, congratulations. I'm going to hand you back to the dude. There you go, Danny. I gotta admit, that's a first for me. I don't know if it's a first in history or not, but it's definitely the first for me. Danny, that race, uh, you had yourself a different partner beside you for the restart of that race. Donnie Shots got taken out early, but uh, Mark Kinzer gave you quite a battle right at the corners. But man, you checked up and went. Well, I tell you what, I don't really know why he took off so early. Doug Clark told us to take off over at the Goodyear side. He took off early. He went into one and uh, rolled a left for a tire off. It wasn't his fault, and he, got, he lost it. It's heartbreaker. I know we probably had a good race, but hey, that'd take nothing away from my, uh, my Eagle chassis. J.D. Byrider, Ham America, America Press Steel, Massey Motorsports, Hoosier Tires, uh, Paul Kissler built us a great engine, and uh, Phil Durst, everybody helped us out, and we couldn't be here without my man, Tony Stewart. I'll tell you what, he believed in us, put us a team together, and, and this is the dividends we pay, and I owe it all to him. Danny, during that red flag, you guys did change gears. I did not have a chance to ask you, taller or lower? Uh, we went a little taller than we were. We, we didn't know how it would be, and as you all know, the catfish likes to run the bottom, so we want to make sure we can get around there. Sounds great. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, give it up. Danny the dude, Lasoski. Thanks to Donnie Shots, Miss Fortune, you got yourself a chance to be up on the pole. Just didn't quite work out for you tonight, though. Uh, no, uh, uh, we had one start, we got the lead. The next start, Danny got the lead. The rest is history. Danny ran a real good job. Uh, him and the entire crew did, a, did an awesome job. You know, it might have been different. Uh, if Donnie was here, who knows? Uh, who cares? Daniel Soski is the 21st winner of the Knoxville Nationals. Getting yourself up on the platform again, though, it still has to feel good. Uh, you know, oh, yeah, anytime you can run second in this race, uh, uh, years back, everybody said I took Sammy Swindell out, but I'd run second for $50,000 any day of the week. Sounds good. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Mark Kinzer, ladies and gentlemen, second place this evening. Joe, you talk to talk about how this crew's been working hard all week long. You got yourself a third place tonight. You got to be satisfied with that. I'm um, tickled to death. Uh, I don't know if, if uh, we, I'd be standing here if shots didn't turn over because uh, he was definitely the dominant car all week. But, uh, you know, uh, that's just... This gives me a little job security for a while, so at least I know I can go out to California and try and do a good job for the Beef Packer team. They, they definitely got the equipment to run up front, so uh, this definitely shows they, they got what it takes to at least be on the podium at the Knoxville Nationals. Congratulations again, third place this evening. Not bad at all. No, not bad at all. Thanks. Joey Saldan, ladies and gentlemen. One, two, and three. Words can't describe how I feel right now because we won in 98. I was overjoyed, didn't really know what it, what it felt like, and it was kind of overshadowed by, uh, you know, Sammy saying his bladder got sucked shut, which uh, I don't think it was the case, but it just got overshadowed. Tonight, I don't think there was any excuses. We, uh, 
We had a really good car. Jimmy Carr did a great job, and uh, I can't tell you this, I'm just elated. I can't even believe that we did it. There, uh, before the yellow, uh, uh, I don't know if we'd have passed him because he was awful fast, but we could run with him. After the yellow, we sealed our tires up a little bit, uh, uh, which Hoosiers, I don't know if they've, you've ever heard of one sealing up, but uh, and at the very end, uh, our platter sucked shut. <laughs> 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 no, no. Danny wanted to say fair and square, and I do want uh, my highest regards for Donnie Schatz. May the Lord willing that he is okay. He took one nasty ride right in front of me, and Danny, uh, you got an eye full of that as well as I did. It wasn't pretty, and I hope that he's okay. He's a fine young gentleman. Uh, definitely a highlight for me. Um, it gives me a little job security going to Billings because, uh, you know, you really don't know what your owner's expectations are when you drive for somebody. When you own your own car, it's... Uh, a lot different so uh, hopefully uh, we have a good swing through California and have a good rest of the year. As you well know I like it when the racetrack's all the way to the fence that way it plays more into a driver's deal instead of the motor and but uh, Jimmy just kept me calm all night long he said just don't worry about it don't worry about it. you've been here a million times just like a regular race and I've never quite seen it this nice on Saturday night Amen. I've usually seen it blow off a little bit then uh, tire, tire selection was very critical when that happened Tonight, it kind of took all that out of it, and you just had to have a good free car uh, through lap traffic and to make sure you got off the corners nice and straight. Road gear wasn't going to get it done on top, I didn't think. I think you're going to have to be very mobile. And as you will know, when you're racing guys like Mark Kinzer and Joey Seldon and all these guys, you got to be able to go everywhere. You just can't have your race car set for one place on the racetrack because you're going to get beat every time.